Hi there and welcome to our latest video. Today we want to give you a demonstration on how to use tasks by Planner in Microsoft Teams. Firstly, when we go into Microsoft Teams, if you don't already have tasks downloaded, you'll need to go to the three dots down on the left hand panel and click on more apps and download this from the store. Once you have done this, it should come up in your recent like it has in this demonstration. We are just going to go ahead and click into this. If you right click it, you have the options to pop out the app, find more info on the app, pin the app or uninstall it. I'm just going to pin this app as I know that task keeps me super organized and it will be useful to have pinned on my taskbar. When the app has loaded, it will come up with this page. You have different viewing options in the left hand taskbar. We are currently just in our task page so we can add new tasks here. These are your own personal tasks for your everyday jobs. We will look into shared channel tasks later on. But we can set our individual task to its priority as well as adding in the date when the task is due to be completed too. When you're happy with your task, you can click the tick to confirm the task. Now when we go into the important tasks page on the left hand side, we will see any tasks that have a high priority against them, like this one that we just made. All high priority tasks will appear in this page. Same with the plan section, any tasks which are planned with a due date will appear on this page also. As I said earlier, you can use tasks within channels. We can see any shared planners underneath the shared plan section arrow. In these channels, you have different planners. For example, we have a marketing and projects channel, but this can have multiple planners within it. We can see it already has a social media planner within the channel, but we could add, for example, a projects or an event planner within the same channel too. Once we have gone into our shared planner, we can see a change at the top taskbar. These options are different ways to view the task in the planner. At the moment, they are currently in list view, but you can have this in a board view, which is my personal favorite because it has the best layout out of all of the options and everyone can see clearly what needs to be done. You can use buckets at the top for different categories like we have here, for example, seven day to do actions, a Facebook bucket and a LinkedIn bucket too. So these are specific tasks that fall under those categories. The buckets work similarly as the other tasks we went over. First off, we want to add the name of our task. If we save this, we can then change the settings of the task after. Now we've added it to our bucket, we want to click into the task where we can then see a list of different options for your task. We can add any relevant notes and explanations of the task in this section here. Down below there is a checklist. If you have multiple parts or steps to the task, you can add these sections into the checklist. These can then be ticked off when they are finished. If you can see the top right hand of the checklist, you can tick this box to show these on the task card so it will make it easier for you to tick off which we will cover shortly. Below the checklist, there is an attachment section where you can add any relevant files from your computer, team files or even any relevant links to a URL in there too. Comments can be added underneath this also. If we scroll back to the top, we can assign your task to the relevant people. It will then notify any people assigned via an email letting them know they have been assigned a new task in that planner. We have a progress section underneath. This is to let your collaborators know that the task either hasn't been started, is in progress or completed. As well as adding a due date similar to how we did earlier, we can also add a date that the task needs to be started to. Now that we have added a task and have assigned it to ourselves, we can see this in our assigned to me section. And if we go back to our board, we can see our checklist listed out under our task name. This can be ticked off easily when you have completed something off the list. You can then tick it off on there. And we can also change the status to in progress to show our collaborators that the task has already been started on. Now, if we take a look at the other task views, for example, the chart, this displays your task in an analytical way, so if you work well with charts and analytics, you might prefer to look at it this way. The charts show different things like the amount of tasks in a bucket, the status of the tasks, priorities and members. Tasks are all listed on the left hand side, on the right there is a board view as well for all the tasks within the planner. We can then see the last view option which is the schedule. This is in a calendar format which makes it super easy to see when tasks need to be completed by. If you and your team are working on a lot of tasks at the same time and the planner is on overload, you can filter down to find specific tasks you are looking for by clicking the filter drop down menu. This gives you a list of filters like when it's due or a specific label or bucket or even the priority and who it's assigned to. This makes it super easy for you to find the exact task that you're looking for. 
This concludes our video for today. We really hope that this has been helpful for you and we would love to hear your thoughts on the Tasks for Team app. So let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks.